Hello everybody, grace and peace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, today I'm checking out, should Christians keep the Old Testament laws? And just really show how atheists seem to not understand the Bible. And every single time they open it up, they try and read it according to their own understanding and fail miserably. Well, I would disagree with that. Any Christian who says that uh, is one of these what I call greasy gracers, where they just throw out grace, 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 but there's no laws. Yes, there are laws, but we're to keep the laws laid out in the New Testament. The laws in the Old Testament were for the Old Covenant at a specific time when Israel was surrounded by people who were very barbaric. They were laws to keep their culture to show that they were not like the pagans. Now when Jesus is saying to go out into all the world and preach the gospel, it's not talking about trying to change um, people's cultural identity, unless, of course, it conflicts with, um, with uh, moral truths, um, but to, to, ra to radically change their hearts, to radically change their way of thinking. But they can keep their things that distinctively make them different, such as their language, um, their uh, some of their customs. Now, although I would agree that in India, when um, they used to burn the wife uh, in a Hindu ritual, where um, when the husband died and they cremated both the living wife with the dead husband, it was right for the Christians to go and stop that. And likewise, any other practices that are immoral like that. This is the typical verse you use all the time. And to show you how stupid you are, with my respect to you, when giving this verse, you fully don't understand it at all. Here we go. Do not think that I have come to abolish the law or the prophets. I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill them. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, not the least stroke of a pen, will by any means disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do the same will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whoever practices and teaches these commands will be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpasses that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Now, you see that word until? It's very important. The laws and the prophets will be passed away until it's accomplished. What did he say on the cross? It is finished. What did he say uh, at the Last Supper? This is the new covenant in my blood. And to show how dumb it is that anybody who brings up this verse to try and say, well, see, it's talking about the old covenant laws. Right in the same chapter, he's changing the Old Covenant laws. You have heard that it was said, do not murder. Right. That's E. That's found in um, math, uh, sorry, Exodus 20.14. But I tell you that anyone who looks, oh, sorry, and do not murder. And I 
and anyone who murders will be subject to judgment. But I tell you that anyone who is angry with his brother will be subject to judgment. Again, anyone who says to his brother, Raka, is answerable to the Sanhedrin. But anyone who says, You fool, will be in danger of hellfire. Therefore, if you are offering your gift at the altar, and there you remember that your brother has something against you, leave your gift in front of the altar. First go and reconcile to your brother, then come and offer your gift. Settle matters quickly with your adversary, who is taking you to court. Do it while you are still with him on the way. Or he may hand you over to the judge, and the judge may hand you over to the officer, and you may be thrown into prison. I tell you the truth, you will not get out until the very last penny is paid. And all the way through, we see him changing the old covenant laws, making them now for everybody. And then he talks about how to do different acts that were part of the old covenant. Right through, judge. How to how to properly judge people and so on and so it's not as if the laws are done away with completely what what he was talking about when he said um, uh, the least of the commandments and teaches others to do so of these commandments what's he talking about he's talking about these ones right here on how to first get the laws written in your mind to stop thinking about breaking the law because you have to think about murdering somebody before you murder them. You have to think about doing the act of adultery before you commit it. You have to think about, oh, well, if I divorce her, I'll get a new and better wife before you divorce. And so you have to think about how you're going to lie if you want to make a, an oath. Well, the one who lies is the one who needs to make an oath. But the one who lives and speaks by the truth simply makes their yes their yes and their no their no. And this is what he's teaching and saying here. So the chapter you're trying to use to follow the law changes the law. And this is why we always say, don't ever let an atheist, an agnostic, or a Muslim, or a pagan, or whatever, teach you the Bible. Go and check up on what they say. Make sure it's in line with the Word of God, and it's not just, you know, them speaking and trying to understand it to how they want to. Stay tuned for part two.